Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is a travel slash reading vlog for Tor.comathon. So it is Thursday. Tor.comathon doesn't officially start until Saturday, but I am about to get on an airplane to go to my brother's wedding in Texas. And so I thought it would be fun to vlog the entire Tor.comathon plus the trip. So I am starting on my TBR early because I have a lot of Tor.com books that I want to get through, and I'm going to take you guys along with me. I've packed a bunch of books. I have some ebooks. I have a couple on audio. So for audiobook on the way to the airport, I'm going to be listening listening to Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. Finally, this has been on my TBR for so long and I'm excited to be finally getting to it. It should be a good start. So it is kind of late. I wanted to do a quick update before I go to bed. It's been a great day. I got a lot of reading done on the flight and then I've just been hanging out with my parents, chatting and catching up for several hours. But I finished two novellas, which is awesome. I did complete Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang and it was fantastic. The writing is absolutely gorgeous. It's such an interesting world setup where gender isn't assumed at birth and children decide which gender they want to be confirmed as when they're ready to do so, which is really interesting. And it follows the relationship of twins that gets complicated and there's political stuff and family stuff. And I don't want to say too much more than that, but I really loved it. The writing is gorgeous and I'm excited to continue on in the series. This one is going to be a four and a half star read for me, so success with book one, which is very exciting. Then I read Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. This one is just over a hundred pages, so it was very short little novella that I was able to read on the plane, and this was also excellent. So this is a literary horror novella by an indigenous author that is sort of playing off of the idea of Indian burial grounds, but in a very different way. It follows a native teen boy who is seeing his dead father and increasingly creepy and weird stuff happen. But a lot of this book is about generational trauma, about identity, about reclaiming your heritage and the messiness that goes along with that. Yeah, I really love this. Definitely gonna say check content warnings if you need them, but it was it was fantastic. This is another one that's probably like a four and a half or five star, so I'll have to sit on it, but I finished that. And then I also read quite a bit in two other things. I am about halfway through Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor. I know, I like all the reading. It's amazing how much reading I can do on a travel day with no kids, but um, I read I'm about halfway through Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor really enjoying it. I'll update you guys more on this later in terms of the story. It's it's interesting and I can see why people have such a hard time talking about this. Um, yeah, maybe I'll think about how to talk about this later once I've finished it, but I am liking it so far. It's going well. And then I am a little ways into Siren Queen by Nevo. This comes out in May and I'm loving it. It's really interesting. It's set in an alternate reality golden age of Hollywood following a Chinese girl who is the daughter of immigrants who wants to be on screen. And it, it's interesting because it literalizes some of the predatory practices of Hollywood studios and directors at the time, especially towards women, towards young women of color. And I, I'm loving it so far. So so far, so good. Reading is going well and um, having a great time catching up with family. I'll check in later. Good morning. Today we've got the rehearsal. I have a dress from Reb Dolls and it's super soft and comfortable, which I'm loving. And I am almost done with remote control, so more on that later today. I'll give you guys my full thoughts, but yeah, had a good night. Looking forward to the rest of the day and seeing more family. Hello, we are at an Airbnb in the Dallas area and tonight is the rehearsal dinner for the wedding, which is happening tomorrow. We did a lot of driving. I'm having a good time seeing family and I did finish reading remote control, 
else I wanted to do an update. So this book is interesting. It follows a young girl who people are scared of. They call her the devil's daughter because she can have, she has this like magical green glow that can make people die. But the cause of it is like an alien thing. And it's following the girl and her life and her experience developing this ability after a meteor shower and the response to her. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It's almost like a super villain or super, not really super villain origin story, like anti-hero with superpowers origin story, but make it Nigerian, sort of. I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I liked it. Um, I think Nnedi Okorafor always has great writing and really interesting, unique ideas, and that continues to be true here. I'm excited to talk with everybody about it during the live show and get people's thoughts on it because I feel like I'm probably missing elements of what the story is trying to do, but I liked it. I think this is like a four-star read for me, so yay. Three books down. We'll see how many more I can get through before the end of the readathon. <laughs> Day at the wedding is this afternoon and I'm all ready for it again. Been just enjoying spending time with family, doing lots of talking and catching up. A little bit of reading. I have started listening to Binti Night Masquerade. So that was the audiobook I was listening to. I was doing my makeup and getting dressed and I'm not liking it as much as the other two books in the Binti trilogy, but I'm just happy to be finally working on finishing the trilogy because it's been languishing on my TBR for so long. So I will maybe put in a couple clips of the wedding. I don't want to do too much, but a couple things here and then I will update you guys again once I've made some more progress. <laughs> I know I didn't have a whole lot in the way of clips for the last couple of days. The wedding was so much fun. I had a great time being with family and catching up with people I hadn't seen in a long time, but it definitely wore me out. So I didn't film a whole lot for those couple of days, even though I did actually get a lot of reading done, especially on my travel day. So I have several books to update you guys on. It has been very nice being home, seeing my kids, seeing my husband, I missed them. So let's talk about all the rest of the books that I've finished for the readathon. I did complete Binti the Night Masquerade. I ended up listening to this on audio from my library. And you know, I liked it. I think this might be my least favorite of the trilogy, but I think Nnedi Okorafor is just so creative. I think the ideas she comes up with are so interesting. And I was very happy to finally get to the end of Binti's story. I do think this one has some pacing issues. Like the pacing is a little weird in comparison to the other two books. 
it tends to be much heavier on world building and I wish we had had that a little more spread out across the three novellas. And there are definitely some plot conveniences towards the end of the book. So not my favorite, but I love Binti as a character. I like the way this integrates science fiction and aliens with Nigerian cultures and theology. There's just a lot of really interesting rich stuff happening in this series of novellas. So I ended up giving Binti the Night Masquerade three and a half stars. Then on Scribd, I listened to Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather. This sold me on the premise, which is nuns in space, some of whom are queer. And, you know, I just thought that that premise was so interesting. And it is really interesting. Such a fascinating idea to think about what it would look like practically if we had nuns who are living on a spaceship and traveling from space colony to space colony offering religious services like baptisms and weddings and all of that sort of thing. And so that's what you get in this, but with some interesting twists and turns. It's very slow paced the first half of the novella, not a whole lot is happening. It's really focused on getting to know the characters. But the second half, the pace really picks up. There's more twists and turns and kind of interesting things going on. I definitely liked this, although I didn't love it in the way that I maybe hoped to. But I did like it enough that I'm interested in reading the second book in the series and kind of see where that takes us. I will admit I was tired and things were a little hectic as I was reading it. So it is possible I would have gotten more out of it if I hadn't done that. Like if I had read it at a different time, I could see that being the case. But you know, what are you going to do? You read things when you read them. For me at this time, it was three and a half stars. If I revisit it at some time in the future, maybe it would be higher. But either way, I did enjoy it. I think the ideas here are really interesting. And it has some quite interesting twists towards the end of the novella. By far, my favorite thing that I have completed which is like a warm hug mixed with a therapy session, <laughs> is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. Listen, last year, A Psalm for the Wild Bill came out and I really loved it, but it was like a four and a half star. This one is easily making my favorites list of the year. The pacing problems I had with book one are not existent here. And it is just the most wonderful, cozy, Ah, like great little sci-fi novella. I absolutely adored it. We're following sibling Dex, the tea monk that we met in book one, and their friend Mosscap, the robot, as they sort of introduce Mosscap to different human communities as Mosscap is trying to discover what humans need as the first robot to connect with humanity in thousands of years or generations at least. I don't know if thousands, hundreds maybe. But what I love about Becky Chambers is that she writes cozy, soft sci-fi that is undergirded by hard science in a way that I haven't really seen anybody else do and I think it's cool. So while this book feels just so cozy and Dex's arc in this story is really about them learning to accept just being and recognizing that their value doesn't come from what they contribute to society, that it's okay to rest when you need to. This is why I'm telling you it's like a hug mixed with a therapy session. It's great. But these characters are moving within a world that is really fascinating from a scientific perspective because it's set in a future world where there was a near climate apocalypse, but humanity has been able to figure out how to coexist with the natural world in a way that is sustainable. And the way that Becky Chambers builds that out is so interesting to me. I absolutely love this. Like I said, definitely going to be one of my favorite books of the year, which in my personal rating scale means I gave it six stars, which is what I gave to a favorite of the year. So yeah, I am so happy. This was incredible. This doesn't come out till July. So go pre order it if it sounds up your alley. I am so pleased to say I think it's even better than the first book. Ugh, I loved it. I just it makes me really happy. The final novella that I finished was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. This is also not coming out until June or July, I believe, and it is a horror novella that is retelling The Fall of the House of Usher, a story by Edgar Allan Poe. And it is excellent. It's creepy. And, you know, if you're not a horror fan, check the content warnings, I guess, or take a look at what's included because it's it's definitely a horror novella. But I loved it. I think she did an amazing job of capturing 
what is so great about the original story and then unpacking and expanding certain elements of it. I think fans of Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia should definitely read this because it's set at this crumbling Gothic manor that is literally rotting from the inside. There are mushrooms that smell like corpses. There's creepy fungus. There's all kinds of weird things happening. And we have a main character who I believe is intended to be non-binary. That's not the language used in the book. As you'll see, there's a different set of pronouns being used, but it, it seems pretty clear that the protagonist is meant to be non-binary. So I really loved this. I think that retellings of Poe's work can be hit or miss, but I think this is a very excellent version of it, and I gave it four and a half stars. So yeah, those are all of the things that I finished. In terms of what I'm currently in progress on, I haven't made any more progress yet on Siren Queen, but I plan to finish that up this week. And I am also reading an e-arc of January 15th by Rachel Swirsky, which is really interesting. It's kind of this mental exercise of what if we had a universal basic income? What would that look like amongst different people and different sectors of society? In what ways might it make life better? In what ways might it not? In what ways might it be misused by certain people? And so it's kind of this like slice of life take where we're following a bunch of different characters on the day of their universal basic income payments. And it's pretty interesting. We've got a group of privileged rich kids who are just going to waste it all. We've got a woman who is on the run with her kids from her stalker ex-wife. We've got a young black journalist who's taking care of her sister. And then the fourth perspective is a woman who is part of a cult like a polygamist cult that is abusive. So yeah, conceptually, I think it's really interesting. So far, I'm liking it, although there are moments that I'm like, oh, this is this is difficult to read. But those are the two things for Tor.comathon that I'm currently in progress with. I am reading a couple of other things as well, but since they're not relevant specifically to the readathon, I'm not going to talk about those here. Yeah, so far so good. Reading is going well, and I'm excited to see how many more things I can get to before the end of the week. Talk to you later. Hello, it is Wednesday. We've just got a couple days left in the readathon and I completed one more book. I hosted some reading sprints on my channel and made some good progress. And then right after that, I finished January 15th by Rachel Swirsky. I really ended up liking this. I think I talked a bit in the last clip about what this book is. And for me, this ended up being a four star read. It was conceptually really interesting. Narratively, I found it to be really compelling. I did want a little bit more from it. I think it could have done more of an analytical deep dive into sort of the political and social ramifications of something like this kind of a universal basic income payment structure and what that means. But overall, I thought it was really good, really interesting and thought provoking. And uh, yeah, if it sounds like a topic that would interest you, I would recommend it. So four stars. Like I am actually pretty happy with how many books I've gotten through so far for the readathon. The main thing I'd like to finish before the end of the readathon is Siren Queen. I haven't made any more progress on this yet, but I've got a little over 200 pages to go. So if I can finish that, I would be really happy because I am reading other things outside of just Tor.com titles that I need to read for other purposes before the end of the month that I am working on. But yeah, I think this is the main thing that I'm going to be working on the rest of the week. So we'll see how that goes. And if I'm able to squeeze anything else in, I will also let you guys know. But yeah, overall, I've been really pleased with the books I've been picking up, really pleased with my progress and how many I've been able to get to pretty cool. So I will check back in probably sometime tomorrow. So it is Friday night. The live show for the readathon is happening in less than 30 minutes. And uh, have I made any more progress? <laughs> I'm sorry, Queen. No, I have not. Um, I was with my kids all day. It's their spring break. And earlier in the week, they had like day camps. But today they were here with me. One of them is not feeling great. And so I ended up spending a lot of time working on this DIY sewing kit for this llama. I'll put in a clip so you can see how it turned out. I have to say I definitely did the bulk of the work 
<laughs> like my kids did a little bit. I did most of it, but it was fun. I had a good time with it. And um, they, I let them like play Minecraft while I worked on some of it and listened to my audiobook for Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. And I'll be honest, that's kind of all I want to be reading right now because I am just loving it so much. And so alas, I don't think I will be finishing Siren Queen for the purposes of this reading vlog. If I finish it this weekend, maybe I'll still go ahead and include some clips of me finishing it and my final thoughts. So far, I've been really liking it. I've just kind of gotten sidetracked. So I had a really strong first few days with traveling and stuff and then haven't haven't gotten as much done, but I'm very excited for the live show. I think it's going to be fun. We'll be discussing remote control, talking about all the other things that we read this week, and I've loved seeing everybody's social media posts of the all the different novellas people are reading. In general, it seems like a lot of people are having a great time with the readathon, which makes me really happy. And you know what? I did get a bingo, and then some. I did get through a lot of things that have been sitting on my TBR for a long time, so I feel like that's a success. Anyway, I will check back in probably to update you on Siren Queen and wrap up this reading vlog. And you know what? If I finish it after the readathon is technically over, it's okay. We're still, we're still putting it in the vlog. Spring in New York City is one of my favorite times of the year and it's beautiful. Everything is blooming. Sunday, I had a great day out with my youngest kid. We went to this allergy-friendly ice cream shop, All About Ice Cream, which is the only place you can get an ice cream cone. And so he was thrilled. He had a uh, cookie one and I had key lime pie. We went to playgrounds. Made the Minecraft button. Then we went out to dinner at Bear Burger, which is another great allergy-friendly restaurant. If you live in New York, worth a look, great food. And they have vegan options too. I got some dancing to the music and we just had a really fun time together. It did get chilly, so we ended up moving inside, but um, had, had a really great day. Hello, it is Monday morning. I have finished Siren Queen and uh, I had a really busy weekend with kids and everything. So this just like update wasn't gonna happen yesterday, but I freaking love this book so much. Um, like it, I didn't know I needed this book in my life, but it is, gorgeous like the writing the prose is beautiful I feel like I just I love the the prose in this I love the nuance and layers to the themes and the characterization and yeah oh my gosh it's amazing like, what can I say so much has happened since the last time I updated you guys on this because I, you know, she was still, the main character was still a teenager at that point. This book gave me so many feelings. I teared up at the end. It's about, yes, the predatory behaviors of early Hollywood studios, but it's also about identity. It's about marginalization, about wanting to be seen by people and to have your voice heard. It's super queer. And the way some of the relationships are written between our main character and women that she ends up in relationships with in the book is just so beautiful and raw and human and transformative in some way, I guess. And I think I love the fact that our main character is willing to embrace being a monster and like this explores these ideas of the other in various ways being seen as monstrous. Being Chinese, being queer, being a woman who has ambition and isn't willing to settle for things and the dangers that come with that um, yeah. And it's interesting, too, because there are certain things in this book that end up engaging with this question of passing and how people who can pass in society, even though they are people of color or even though they are queer but aren't recognized as that, face their own challenges. So, like, no one really has it has it easy. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is a book that I will probably reread at some point in the future. 
I did not expect, <laughs> I did not expect to love this book as much as I do. It's also interesting too because the way she uses mythology and metaphor, it is clearly drawing a lot on fey mythology, but then blending it with this idea of Hollywood studios. So they become something larger than life in a way that is literalized using mythological frameworks. It's, it's brilliant. This, I feel like I just, oh my gosh, like what did I, I, I feel like truly this book is brilliant and gorgeous. And I, like, I didn't know I needed this book in my life. And I didn't expect to have such strong feelings about it, honestly. I mean, I thought I would like it because I've enjoyed her writing in the past. I read The Chosen and the Beautiful and I liked it quite a lot, but I didn't love it the way that I love this. And I'm sure it's not going to be the book for everyone. I'm sure there are going to be people who won't get on with the writing style or whatever it is, but this book just spoke to me and wow, I need a finished copy. So it comes out in May. I'm really glad that I decided to keep going with the vlog until I finished the book because I just like, I'm, I'm happy to have another opportunity to talk about it. Okay, as I'm editing, I wanted to add one other thing to my my discussion of Siren Queen because another thing that this book did that I wasn't expecting and loved is there is a side character that our main character is really close to who is an actress and a beautiful fat woman and I love the way that that was handled. The way that bodies were handled in this book because there is like beauty or something to be attracted to in you know women who aren't pretty in women who are pretty or beautiful and are fat or live in marginalized bodies or are thin or are angular or like all of these different different things and while greta who's the the one of the fat characters is the, the one that really stood out to me that I appreciated. She's not the only one. There's a lot of diversity. There's also this moment, like there's so many like moments in this. It's so rich, but there's a, there's a moment where our heroine encounters this woman who is, I think supposed to be a stand-in for like Hattie McDaniel, who was very successful, but she played Mammy in Gone with the Winds and tended to be cast as those things and yet was a very successful wealthy woman who didn't actually speak the way that she spoke on screen and so it's really interesting because you see that in the book that that this character that people want to see on screen is a costume that she puts on and takes off and how dramatically different it is from the woman that she actually is this like luxurious beautiful wealthy woman anyway i just think this book is just doing, there's so many things in this book that are incredible and I love it and uh, please go read it. Whew, man. Um, so I have to say I'm really pleased with how Tor.comathon went for me in general. I got to a lot of books that were on my TBR. Clearly the highlights of my reading for this were Siren Queen and A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers you know, if it wasn't clear already, this is going on my list of favorite books of the year. So the fact that I found two through this readathon is so exciting. And I don't think I gave anything below three and a half stars. It's been great. And it's been really cool to see how much other people have enjoyed the readathon. I just need to like sit in my feelings now for a minute after, <laughs> after reading this book. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I just finished it like maybe 15 minutes ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, I love this. I'm going to write a review for it and I hope you all will go read it if this sounds like something that would be, be up your alley. I just love her like dream like prose. Oh my god. Anyway, it's amazing. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on this video and for your question of the day, I would love to hear from you. If you participated in Tor.comathon, tell me what was the highlight of your experience. This could be a book you read, something you did. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.